Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and I hope you're having a great day. So I finally listened to the first video created by a lady who is the niece of Debbie Collier's first husband. And I should say the first video that she did on the Debbie Collier case. So the female host of this channel is Amanda and Jeffrey's cousin. I'm going to call Debbie Collier's first husband, Mr. Bearden. There's no reason to share his full name because I think he deserves his privacy. The cousin's YouTube channel is called COTR Podcast, and her co-host is her husband. I'll leave a link to their channel in the description. Together, they did a good job of pointing out why her cousin, Amanda Bearden, may not be involved. The cousin did not say that she knew one way or another who harmed Debbie Collier, but she did a good job of giving us another perspective. I did feel, however, that being Amanda's cousin made the host a tad protective of Amanda Bearden, but that's fair enough. I do the same thing if a family member of mine was being dragged through the mud even if the person's behavior did appear suspicious. It's sort of in our nature to protect those people in our tribe. So according to the channel host, Debbie Collier was married to her uncle, Mr. Bearden, years ago. It also sounds like this cousin is close to Mr. Bearden and wants to respect his feelings and not rip on his daughter in any way. By the way, the host calls Amanda Mandy. Per the cousin, Debbie Collier and Mr. Bearden divorced many years ago. Despite that, I'm sure Mr. Bearden is having a hard time right now. First, it can't be easy hearing about the state in which his ex-wife, Debbie Collier, was found. Second, I'm sure it's painful knowing that the investigators had probable cause to search his daughter, Amanda's house. It can't feel good to know that your child is being looked into for such a grisly crime. I looked up Mr. Bearden, and just like Debbie Collier and her husband, her second husband, Steve Collier, he has no criminal record that I could find. The records indicate that Mr. Bearden currently lives in a city in Alabama that is three hours and 25 minutes away from Athens, Georgia, by car. I say that to shoot down any conspiracy theorists who may want to go after Mr. Bearden. I don't know exactly where he was on the weekend Debbie died, but I do know he lives three hours and 48 minutes away from Tallulah Falls, where Debbie's remains were found. Debbie and Steve Collier married in 2013, so Mr. Bearden was in the rearview mirror of Debbie Collier's life when the crime occurred. I'm assuming the investigators will have looked at Mr. Bearden and quickly eliminated him. It would be weird for an ex-husband who the victim divorced years ago, to suddenly decide he wants to hurt her, especially since Debbie is his kid's mother. As far as Amanda's potential involvement in the case, the cousin said that she has no idea if her cousin Mandy could possibly be involved in the crime. The host did feel that Amanda's sobbing in that follow-up call she made to the police was genuine. I think being related to Amanda Bearden makes it easier for the host to view her as a human being who needs at least one person in her court playing devil's advocate. I do feel that Amanda's cousin is trying to maintain the peace in her family as well. I mean, Amanda's father is her uncle, and it sounds like she's fairly close to him. You don't want to be throwing your uncle's daughter under the bus and then having to see him at Thanksgiving dinner, right? And what we have regarding Amanda's involvement so far is circumstantial evidence. Knowing that Amanda and Andrew moved back to Athens, Georgia, just two days before Debbie went missing, is definitely suspicious. 
However, it does not mean they are the ones who committed the crime, nor does the Venmo transaction. That could have been a setup to make them look like the guilty parties. Thinking that Amanda was likely the young woman whose voice was heard by a neighbor of the Colliers arguing on Friday night is another potential piece of circumstantial evidence. Amanda herself has said she was with her mother on Friday night, but the police have not confirmed that the argument the neighbor said she heard really happened nor have they said that it was Amanda yelling or creating a commotion at the Collier residence that night. For all we know, it could have been Debbie fighting with Steve. Maybe Debbie has a young-sounding voice, or it could be some other young lady. I believe that Steve Collier has biological daughters of his own as well. We'll have to wait and see. Now this cousin, also talked about the rumors floating around that Debbie may have cheated. The cousin did not confirm one way or another if Debbie Collier cheated on her uncle. At least, I did not hear her say that in the first two videos about the Debbie Collier case that I watched on her channel. Maybe the cousin says this in another of her videos about the case. The cousin did admit that cheating is an avenue that should be pursued in the case. And I personally would say that I'm sure investigators are looking into that. They would be remiss not to, right? That sort of thing is de rigueur when someone in a relationship dies in this manner. Let me just say that we web sleuths have no concrete evidence of Debbie cheating. And to me, even talking about that on YouTube feels like victim shaming. Debbie isn't here to defend herself. Also, if Debbie cheated in her previous marriage, that doesn't mean she was cheating on Steve Collier. Also, cheating is no good reason to do someone in. It's not a crime, right? It might be a social no-no, but of course we know people do harm other people for that reason. The host's husband addressed Amanda's silence. He said that he doesn't think it's strange that Amanda has been quiet over the past few weeks, but the host then said that he thought that a person connected to the case who does talk a lot to the press or to YouTubers about the case would be someone you'd want to look into. Well, we know that Amanda's boyfriend, Andrew Geigerich, has been talking a lot in the comments sections of various true crime YouTube channels, including mine, was the host trying to say, don't look at Amanda, look at Andrew Geigerich. I'm just wondering if that's what the host was trying to imply. Maybe not, but it hit me because Andrew has definitely been talking a lot in the comments. On to another topic. I wanted to mention that a reporter tracked down some of Debbie Collier's co-workers at the Carriage House Realty in Athens, Georgia, where she worked as the front office manager. When the co-workers were asked about Debbie's state of mind before the crime, they said she showed no hint of any personal problems or worries. Here are quotes from the various co-workers. We are all in a state of complete shock at what has happened. Debbie had been here for seven or eight years. We are still taking this in. She never mentioned any personal issues in her life." End quote. Maybe Debbie talked about her personal life at work. Maybe she didn't, but from all I've read, Debbie and Steve seemingly had a happy marriage. I made the video yesterday about Steve Collier to try and debunk theories about him possibly being the perpetrator. Some people misunderstood me, though, and thought I was trying to implicate the man. I really wasn't. He's part of the inner circle, so it is important to at least look at him. The police did say, however, that they saw Steve Collier at work from 9 a.m. to 4.06 p.m. 
and Steve was parking cars for the Georgia Bulldogs game at a bank where I'm sure they have more than one security camera. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Now do me a favor, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you're not.